Recently, there have been several epidemiological studies indicating that breast cancer patients who were taking statins either prior to their diagnosis or after they were diagnosed with breast cancer, they do better in terms of clinical outcome. And in addition, there has been several in vitro studies on breast cancer cell lines which have been treated with statins and we've seen anti-proliferative effects uh, on the cells. And also there have been several translational studies where statins has been used and shown the same anti-proliferative effects. So we looked for statin use or cholesterol-lowering medication use in the BIG-198 study. The BIG-198 study was an endocrine trial conducted between 1998 and 2003, randomizing patients to either five years of tamoxifen, five years of fletrazole, or the sequential. And uh, that was at the same time when statins were being prescribed more and more. So we wanted to look and see what is the interplay between these two drugs. We know that for aromatase inhibitors like letrozole, uh, hypercholesterolemia is a known side effect. And also there have been indications that tamoxifen acts on the opposite way concerning cholesterol levels so that patients on tamoxifen would lower their cholesterol levels. And also, there's recently been a very interesting study conducted uh, at Duke University where they have identified a metabolite which is called 27-hydroxycholesterol, which is a metabolite from cholesterol. And this metabolite can then bind to the estrogen receptor. So our hypothesis was that if patients on endocrine treatment with an aromatase inhibitor would raise their cholesterol levels, then 27-hydroxycholesterol might also raise at the same speed and then that could potentially bind to the estrogen receptor. So we wanted to look in the BIG-198, which is a huge study with more than 8,000 women included and with a long-term follow-up. So we wanted to see what happened with their cholesterol levels while they were on the trial. So cholesterol levels were sampled every six months during the trial and every six months information on medication was collected as well. What we have seen is that when we look at cholesterol levels, we see that patients that were in the tamoxifen arm were tamoxifen only for five years. We see that they have a steady decrease of their cholesterol levels throughout the study time. And then when the study ended, there was a follow-up uh, blood sampling and we saw that it raised again to the baseline levels. Whereas for those women who were in one of the three arms containing letrozole, we did not see a decrease, we did not see a high increase either. But what we saw was that those women who were assigned to one of the letrozole arms, they would sooner or later, many of them start cholesterol lowering therapy. So what might have happened is that this hypercholesterolemia was diagnosed and that at their general practitioner and they were prescribed a cholesterol lowering medication. So when they came for the next study follow-up, their, their cholesterol levels would have been lowered due to the medication. So that was one very interesting finding. And our main uh, hypothesis was that this could impact on outcome. So we looked at disease-free survival, breast cancer-free interval, and uh, distant uh, recurrence-free interval. And we saw that patients who were put on a cholesterol-lowering medication while on trial, they did better than those who were not prescribed a cholesterol-lowering medication. So I think what we need to acknowledge is that endocrine treatment does impact on cholesterol levels and that cholesterol levels may most certainly impact on breast cancer outcome as well. So that this interplay, we need to understand that much better and uh, we need to be aware of cholesterol levels uh, while patients are on endocrine therapy, especially while on an aromatase inhibitor. With the combination of the epidemiological studies, which have consistently shown that patients on cholesterol-lowering medication, in particular statins, they do better, 
those epidemiological studies combined with functional studies in the lab and the translational studies and now the data from the big 198, I think we have sufficient data to launch an adjuvant trial with statins concomitant with endocrine treatment. Although that is a very large step to take and it will include probably up to around 3,000 patients. So what we are planning for and which we hope to start enrolling uh, to next year is an, uh, a trial in the first line endocrine metastatic setting where patients then will be randomized to either endocrine treatment alone or endocrine treatment in combination with a statin.